Excellencies, you all are aware that Bangladesh witnessed a second revolution on 5th of August 2024, where mass uprisings spearheaded by our valiant students and joined by the masses. The current interim government was sworn in on August 8th. Our young generation have impressed upon the people of their people of their aspirations for a revolutionary change, restoration of all institutions of the state to ensure democracy and human rights through a meaningful reform. Our government is committed to ensuring a transition to an inclusive and pluralistic democracy and create an environment in which free, fair, and participatory elections can be held. Your Excellencies, the theme of this summit, as well as for this inaugural leaders' session, an empowered global south for a sustainable future, is a very timely and appropriate one. The global south must work together to ensure sustainable future for our Mother Earth. We can start with the vision of building a world of three zeros. Zero net carbon emissions, zero wealth concentration, and zero unemployment. If we give an important place for our social businesses, that is business which are created solely for fixing social and environmental problems, we can set our path to create a world of three zeros. We invite the leaders of the Global South to work together for creating social businesses to address all environmental and social problems. It can become a massive force if we work together. We must place the youth and students who constitute a significant portion of the Global South's population at the heart of our strategies. Two thirds of our population are youth. Chotto shoro beshi shakha uposhakhay. Deshir brihatamu bank IFIC. They are the most powerful segment of the society. They are different. They are committed to creating a new world. They are capable. They are technologically far ahead of the previous generation. They can make all impossibles possible. They are entrepreneurial. Job they want, not because they enjoy it but because there is nothing else available. Just because they are prepared by an education system in all our countries to get ready for jobs. Their creative capacities are forgotten. Yet, all human beings are born as creative beings. They are natural entrepreneurs. But our education systems and financial system are built only for creating job seekers and providing jobs for them. We have to redesign our system. We hope we can do it together in the Global South, which is rich with fantastically creative young population. Combining entrepreneurship with social business can create miracles. We'd like to propose some common facilities in the Global South to take concrete steps to unleash the creativity and energy of our young population through social business. My lifelong experience has been that our financial system is created to promote wealth concentration. We have to redesign our financial system to make sure wealth is shared with all. It should not be a one-way path for wealth. We must ensure financial services for all people, particularly women and the youth. We can learn from each other how this can be done successfully. Many countries have taken a lead in this matter. We need to do more. Finance should never be a wall for anybody. It should be designed to unleash entrepreneurship and creativity. Social business banks can be encouraged to be created for solving problems such as poverty and, un and unemployment. Being old should not mean that you have to retire, withdraw yourself from economic activities. Human creativity never stops on a date fixed by the state. It doesn't stop until the last breath. We may work together to see how to make societies supportive of creativity 
all the people as long as they live. I have been encouraging the power of sports to be utilized for social purposes. I am glad Paris Olympics 2024 paid attention to it. Together with Paris Olympics 2024, we created a new concept, new concept of Olympics. It's called Social Business Olympics. Paris Olympics was designed as a social business Olympics. As the Global South, we can work together to unleash the social power of the sports. Our task is now to carry out vital reforms in our electoral system, judicial, local government, media, economy, and education. Education. We are holding dialogue with political parties, civil society leaders, and experts to give shape to democratic aspirations of our revolutionary discussions. Your Excellencies, I invite you to visit Dhaka soon. Otherwise, you may miss something very, very important for us. Much of the Dhaka has turned into graffiti capital of the world. Young students and children aged as young as 12 to 13, have been painting the walls of this 400-year-old city with images of a new, democratic, environment-friendly Bangladesh. There is no central planning or guidance from them, no budget support from anybody. It is just an outpouring of their emotions and commitment to the goals of the Second Revolution. They approached the shop, nearby shopkeepers to buy paints and brushes for them. They make up their own subject and own messages. Messages they are painting will thrill anybody. Anybody can read in them what the youth are dreaming of. It is our job to make their dreams come true. That's what their governments is all about. In 1952, the Bangladeshi students sacrificed their lives for their mother tongue. It, is, it inspired the struggles for the right to speak in their own mother language all over the world. Some seven decades later, our student-led second revolution is inspiring youth throughout the global south to raise their voice for democracy and human rights, dignity, equality, and shared prosperity. I am honored to be the oldest young person to take part in this revolution and help them make their dreams come true. They need support from all of you. Wish them well, wish them success. Thank you very much for allowing, allowing me to share my thoughts with you. Thank you, Your Excellencies.